just wanted to say, since I was the person at the hustings last night, I just wanted to set the record straight. Uh, what I said last night, and I will say it here, is that the new candidates will not defend the closures of the day centres. So I actually endorse what Amina said, and I think, Nick, you rather skated over that. I was quite clear, and I think I was quite unequivocal last night, that as candidates, we do not endorse the closure of 17 day centres or, or the loss of building-based care. It is the most diff one of the most difficult issues facing... Can you phrase it as a question, please? ...will be... I was not a question, I just want to set the record straight. Yeah. 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 Okay. That was it. So... Okay. Right. Okay. No, what can you Well, she's chair of... Yeah, I, I, I think I'm going to give all the candidates 30... Not Labour, because that was a Labour point from the floor. 30 seconds to respond to that, OK? Uh, and can I just remind you that from the floor we want questions because these are the spokespeople here for the, the, the uh, parties. OK? okay. Whoa! Sorry. You have 30 <laughs> seconds. Okay. Um, well, I'm glad we've had the opportunity to uh, clarify some of these uh, issues. Um, yes, um, I, I agree. All of the candidates last night were upset and said that they regretted the fact that they closed them. The key question that was asked is, would you reopen them? And on that question, I would have to say that most of the candidates were not clear. I would have to say also, you did make the statement, read between the lines. Uh, hence, I go back to the point that I made. It shouldn't be necessary for people to read between the lines. It. It's quite simple to make a commitment. That's it. 30 seconds response to Zena. Um, yeah, I don't think we've got much to say about that, apart okay. from that we would be committed to uh, reopening these centres and we were opposed to, uh, and I would be opposed to closing them. That's is that simple. I think I'll just re reiterate that it's not uh, an area where I'm an expert at all, um, but um, I, so I have to go by what my colleagues uh, on the group on the council say. Um, so, but I, I would not be opposed to reopening them because I think daycare uh, centres are an extremely important uh, provision in the borough. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, we have a question right at the back, and the order is going to be Nick, Durell, M and A, and Viv. Good evening. I would like to ask any one of you, the four members there, that you, if they know that hiring a council, especially in your council, employ a lot of dodgy, dodgy agencies in the care home. And these agencies, they don't give you any hours guarantee, zero hours, and you don't do anything wrong, they just suck you because they're not bothered. So I would like to ask any member who's sitting down there whether when, if they do get elected, they're going to stop all these dodgy agencies and get on with the right thing for the carers so they can go to work and say they're okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much for your question. Well, um, a short and simple answer uh, would be the point that we make in our leaflet, stop privatisation, bring services back in-house. We think that those, all those services should not be outsourced. This is another way of... Precisely what you say, employing these dodgy companies, paying bad wages with dodgy contracts, often making it difficult, if not impossible, for people to join a trade union. Now, being a trade unionist, being the host of the trade union, uh, the, the trade union council this evening in Haringey, um, obviously um, it's going to be a popular theme. But it's absolutely essential, I think, that an incoming council commits itself to bringing back those services in-house with their pay on a par with other council workers. They shouldn't lose any money, that they should be encouraged to join trade unions and that there should be no zero-hour contracts whatsoever. I work with workers that work in the care industry as well um, and in my work for Unite. And some of these workers are treated appallingly. There's a race to the bottom and, the, and many councils, and I'm sad to say many of them are Labour, are very much part of that. And it's about time we started to reverse this. This is an opportunity for Haringey Council to, to really change the music and, and lead and spearhead a campaign against all of these things. I think they're pushing against an open door and I would encourage them to do it. Thank you. 
Yep, as mentioned earlier, we um, the, the Green Party leaders, Caroline Lucas, Jonathan Bartley, and Natalie Bennett actually have been quite vocal um, in the past couple of years about this kind of gig economy that we have. And I've been um, vocal about making sure that workers have rights, even if you are on zero hour contracts, which we would hope you're not, that you have the basic rights that other full time and permanent workers get. And, and to reiterate, preferably, we wouldn't go to private companies. But if they did go to private companies, we would be there to hold Labour to account to make sure that the contracts, any contracts being signed, are worthy. That the London living wage is being paid. Um, that there are job securities. Um, I'm not privy to all of what's uh, happening, so I, I'm, I'm unaware of your particular situation, unfortunately, so I can't comment on that specifically. But it makes sense that if you are signing contracts for the borough, that people are given a fair uh, fair wage and fair job uh, prospects and opportunities along the way and I would support that. As I said, we will be holding Labour to account and that's what we'll be doing on the council and, and you have my word, if I am on the council, I will be one of those people doing that. Thank you very much. So um, I, can, I can speak from experience about what you just spoke about. You know, like I said earlier, I represent people like you on a daily basis and I know what you're talking about is the truth and it's widespread. And I think the reality is that we, we need to have a national conversation about outsourcing of services. And the reality is that the, 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 the benefits, allegedly, that it delivers for local authorities and this idea that, 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 that it's it's cheaper. Actually, the, the, the only reason why it's possible for it to be ch uh, cheaper is is because it's at the expense of wages. Because of the because if you if you run a service at a, at a profit margin, then actually what you're not doing is delivering it on cost. And actually, these types of services can be delivered on cost. And what we need to make sure we do is look in to how we can start doing that in Haringey. But let's let, let's be let's be honest here. I mean, I noticed the Tories aren't here, but where 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 has all of this come from? This hasn't come from the, from, from, from the Labour Party. The the drive towards privatisation has has, has 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 come from the Tories. I'm not saying that Labour can be completely exonerated. Um, you know, when, when we were in government, but let's not forget that we've got people here that were in coalition with 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 with, with, with the with, with, with the Tory government and who are now sitting here trying to pitch themselves to the left of us and what I would actually say in terms of, of, of the Green Party as well. You know what, the reality is if you're not going to be part of the Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn, then actually if you're going to turn up here and try and give me a left-wing pitch, well, you know, I find that slightly dubious. <laughs> well, as the coalition has been mentioned, um, I think that the... Uh, five years or so when uh, the Tories were in coalition with the Liberal Democrats, um, we held them back from doing some of the things that we're talking about now. There, well, there's, there's, lots of, there's lots of things um, that the Tories are doing now um, that we, we held back. And I wasn't, uh, uh, I'm not an MP, so I wasn't in the coalition. Um, uh, but um, going, going back to uh, the question, um, I think there's, there seems to be some sort of um, process whereby a council decides that it can't afford to pay services, so it looks to find the cheapest way to provide those services, and so it privatises. And then after about three, four, five, six years, suddenly um, they realise that the service provision has plummeted, um, and, they, and then they think, well, perhaps it's better to bring it back in-house. Um, and so I, I'm not a, um, a fan of um, complete um, privatisation. I think sometimes it, it works in some situations. Um, but I, as a, uh, my personal view would be that um, Haringey services are better uh, provided to the community if Haringey Council runs them. Okay, the next question is the woman there with glasses. So, uh, before I came out, I spoke to my seven-year-old and I asked her what her question would be to you. And there was a lot of, there were a lot of points. We had fly tipping, litter, dog poo, 
the Mimes Garden Ways, uh, kids' places, the library, uh, the parks, all of these things. And, you know, our local park, we're right next to the wreck, it's beautiful, it's wonderful. There's a huge adventure playground which is in disrepair, it's, un it's unsafe. And there's, you know, there's, there's broken glass all in the, there's broken glass all in the grass, it's not great. Um, the library, Wood Green Library, was buzzing, was full of life, you know, and now it's half contact centre. Same in Tottenham, the Tottenham Library was buzzing, full of life, wonderful, now it's a contact centre. Um, it's pretty bleak being a child in Harringay, it turns out. Um, the under two nursery provision, there's no provision for children under two in, in the borough. Um, the children's centres <coughs> are on their knees, the schools are on their knees. <coughs> What are your party's plans for the borough's children? Okay, question. Thank you. Um, I think the um, sometimes you can look at a council um, and look at uh, things as simple as dog poo, um, grass, sorry, glass uh, not being swept up, and those sorts of things, and you can actually say to yourself. If, if this is what I can see that the council is not coping with and not doing properly, um, then what else is going on in the council um, that's, that's going wrong? Provision for uh, children. I mean, we, we defended the libraries. Um, the, the Labour Council said that they would not close any libraries, and they haven't closed any libraries. But what they have done and what they've tried to do is reduce the provision of the library service and as uh, the questioner said, um, parts, of the, parts of some of the libraries are used for council services and, and um, places where you can go and speak to, to officers. Um, provision for children, I think my party, and I'm not sure uh, exactly on the, the, um, uh, the exact wording of it, but I, I think my party thinks that um, the earlier you can um, help parents and help children um, in their start in life, um, the better it will be later in life. Um, so I, I, uh, I don't actually. I don't think I'll. I'll okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So um, I really, really think it's important that you raise the issue of libraries. Um, you know, one of my um, experiences of being a child in Harringay, I, you know, uh, was that I used to go to Wood Green Library. And I can say that, you know, at the time when I went, we're talking the late 80s, um, early 90s, um, when I was a teenager, um, it, was, it was an award-winning teen library. And, uh, you know, I then carried on using the library. And I can say I'm, I'm here today. I'm able to speak to you because of, of good public services and a good public library and I think we should make a commitment to libraries in Harringay. I completely agree with you about the, um, the, the, the situation in terms of what it feels like now. You know, if, if, if a young person wants to read a book, they don't want to be hearing ticket number 35 shouted out over the tannoy and I think that's a reality. In terms of what we will do for, for children, and this is something that I felt very, very strongly about and pushed for in our manifesto, free school meals for primary school children and I think that that is significant in terms of putting money back in, in, in parents pockets you know if you've got two children at primary school age and in terms of the entitlement people and, and, it, and it's not just about you know supporting people on, on benefits at the lowest end but it's about people in low income jobs you can have a family where both people are working and they're on low income jobs and actually if they've got two primary school children um um, uh, uh, you know that they need to, um, you know, pay for their free for, for, for their school meals. That 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 can work out to a hundred pound a month. Um, you know, imagine that back in your pocket. I think that's really really important. Thank you, Hi, thanks for your question. Um, there's quite a lot to get through here. So, uh, firstly, it's all, it's about the whole community well-being, which is what the Green Party is about. Um, I think one of the major things, I touched on it earlier, is the amount of air pollution we have, um, the amount of traffic we have. Uh, I'm running in St Anne's Ward, um, St Anne's Road, Green Lanes are quite 
um, heavy traffic areas. West Green Road's quite a heavy traffic area as well. So we need to um, reshape our roads um, to make it more pleasant for young people to want to ride and cycle and walk to their parks and destination spaces as well. Um, we've also said that we will commit um, to making sure that green spaces are fully funded and kept. Um, there's been uh, some talk, and it hasn't really happened, about privatising some parts, and we would be completely against that. We want to make sure that uh, money and provision is put into that um, side of well-being. Um, we would reverse the cuts to youth services, which I've mentioned before, but it is a very, very important part um, of our fabric and our life. And I remember going to um, play schemes at Chestnut Parks when I was younger. Um, I remember using Tottenham Green and Wood Green Library when I was younger. And these are essential parts of our upbringings. And so we would support um, bringing back youth services, um, supporting schools where we could do that. Um, if we got onto the council. Um, and also the uh, commitment by Sadiq Khan to have um, zero carbon uh, by 2050. We would want to bring that forward to 2030. We don't think 2050 is very ambitious at all. Um, and all of that is about community wellbeing. Um, it's about challenging how we live and how we see our areas. Um, and I think um, our green spaces need um, improving. And also quickly, I just want to touch on uh, Viola, because you did mention um, about litter and glasses splashed. Just quickly, we will just make sure that they are um, held to account because they do clean some areas very well and not others. So we just will we'll do that as well. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much. I think parks are, are an essential uh, resource uh, especially for young people, um, for those people that use them themselves, for those people that are perhaps too old to remember that, but have taken their children or their grandchildren there, they'll realise how important these spaces are. And for some people, especially those people on a low income, who haven't got a garden, who live in flats, it's, it's their only resource, it's their only access to green area. These are precious resources. We shouldn't be selling these on. We shouldn't be interrupting their use. Uh, my, my youngest son is very fond of using the, I don't know what you call them, skating facilities at Finsbury Park. He's a skater, that's what he calls himself. Um, I call him other things, but that's what he calls himself. And he's, he's very fond of using that. He's not very fond of the council when they take over the park for commercial purposes. And this is a growing tendency that very often and far too frequently that revenue is sought from uh, for pop concerts and for, for, for other, other events, but it is at the expense of the green areas and the, uh, the leisure resources of our, of our youth. And I think that that's wrong, and I think that that should, that should end. Um, I also think that uh, the, uh, the vicious cuts to the youth service, which... I've commented on earlier, are absolutely disastrous um, and they need to be reversed. We need to reopen those youth centres. As I said, eight of those 13 youth centres were closed uh, in the aftermath of the riots in 2011. And that was a, that was a crime. And, and there's a wonderful opportunity for the new council to, to reverse that. So, so yes, uh, it's absolutely essential that those resources are made available and that they're maintained to a high standard as well by gardeners like me. I'll close, I'll close the list of questions. I'm going to try and fit in the last three. Uh, it's a man in blue. Last December, a um, decision was made by the council to close Oswald Road Nursing Home. And um, yesterday we heard from the, the relatives of the the residents in the nursing home, we've heard some terrible uh, how sad it is for the people to be uh, forced out of their, what's their home. Um, in March 2017, uh, uh, last year, um, the nursing home failed an inspection by the Care Quality Commission, which was placed into special measures. And this was the pretext which was used to shut the nursing, uh, to shut the nursing home. The staff were blamed for poor quality of care, and our council is arguing that it's not worth keeping the nursing home going because the staff just aren't up to providing that level of care. So, 
point is the staff shouldn't be forgotten. They've recently been issued with a letter informing that they will soon be uh, issued with uh, compulsory redundancy notices. And there are 20, 23 staff, approximately, I think, who are uh, under threat. Um, I'd just like to know the opinion of the councillors, of the <coughs> candidates and the councillors. What do they think about this? Because these are very skilled staff. They've done nothing wrong, really. Uh, they've been forced out of their jobs. Uh, the, council, the council is currently in the process of dismantling the service uh, before the elections. Um, once the staff are gone, it's going to be very difficult to get the, the, the <coughs> in. So I'd really just like to know your opinion on that. Please. What's going to replace it? Okay, stop there. Uh, Emily? Nothing. <laughs> so, um, so, so what I would say is what we need to make sure and ensure is that any, <coughs> any decision about redundancy um, is, is done properly with consultation with the staff. So I'd be interested um, in knowing some more information about what's going on there because obviously it's something that <coughs> I, I, I have a strong um, commitment towards. And I think that, that there is a reality in that... We, we, we do need to respond to challenges on, on, on the quality of care, but that, 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 that doesn't necessarily mean that the answer is closure. And actually, um, I, think, I think that can often be that we need to put action plans in place to improve that quality. And quality of care um, isn't... isn't we should automatically assume that because um, that, that, that it was found that there were issues there, that that, that is to do with um, staff um, performance, staff competence, etc. So I would like to know a bit more about, uh, about what, what's going on there and to ensure that staff members, if they're going through a redundancy process, are being consulted with properly. <coughs> <coughs> I agree with the uh, consultation uh, about redundancy, um, but Osborne Grove um, should not have been closed. It's, uh, it's the only um, centre of its type in the borough. Um, it was, again, and I mentioned it earlier on, how um, there's a, a sort of a, um, a way that the council doesn't support... Um, uh, a facility like that and then it goes into special measures and then the council says well it's not working so therefore we need to close it um, and they're not thinking about the council uh, certainly the Labour Council doesn't think about the people who are there the workers and the and the uh, users of the service um, they're just looking at the uh, I think it was Oscar Wilde who said that um, sometimes people know the know the cost of something and don't know the value of something um, and our policy uh, would, was to fight the closure of the of Osborne Grove, um, and I can't say whether um, we tried to reopen it if we took control of the council. Um, I don't know. It's not it's not an area of the council where I have much of an expertise, um, but uh, certainly we opposed the closure of, the, of Osborne Grove. Okay. Thank you. okay well. Um I'm, as I said last night, I'm not an expert on any of these questions, uh, but I think the relatives and the users of these facilities are, uh, and they made their views quite clear last night, and we endorse those views. It shouldn't be closed. That's it, and if any attempts are made to close it, that should be resisted by the families, by the trade unions, by the Labour Party, and by those on the left as well. Um, and I would, I would hope that... We could elicit a comment from the council or from councillors elect this evening that they won't just look at it, but they'll give a commitment. They could quite easily give a commitment tonight to say no, and that would be tremendously popular. And we would all breathe a sigh of relief, and I'm sure that their popularity would, uh, would soar. As for the way that the staff were treated, I think that's a disgrace as a trade unionist. It's a familiar story. Paint the staff in a terrible light as a pretext for closure. Uh, those staff should be defended by their trade unions and they should be defended by the Labour councillors as well. We should not be closing that centre. We should reverse the closure if it goes ahead and that would be the position of Tusk. <laughs> Yeah, again, I'm not privy to all the nuances of this particular thing, but speaking to a, um, a colleague earlier about this, it sounds 
uh, quite upsetting um, what some of the staff has gone through um, uh, and it's a shame. It's in our manifesto that we would be reversing cuts to uh, social care services and youth services. As I've said earlier today, they're vitally, they're vital.